Hello, hello. Linda White here with another edition of Shakuri's Time Capsule, a short weekly trip down memory lane where I reminisce over fads, fashions, and food from decades past. Today, I thought I'd once again tackle a food-related topic since those seem to be downloaded the most. You know, I should just go ahead and dedicate this entire podcast to food, but that's still under deliberation. Anyway, let's get back to today's topic. Now, the other day I was in the grocery store and something that I haven't seen in ages caught my eye. It was a Chef Boyardee pizza kit. Now, you've most likely seen this. It comes in a box, red, white, and green with the chef's smiling visage on the front. And it has everything you need to make your own pizza. The dough mix, the sauce, the cheese, and in some cases, meat toppings. I was immediately transported back to my very early childhood and my very first memory of having pizza. I think I was about three or four at the time, late 60s. I'm not even sure my siblings had even been born yet. And I distinctly remember my mom getting the Chef Boyardee kit and making us a pizza from it. Anyway, this memory began to trigger others regarding that dear old Chef Boyardee. How many of you other boomers, Gen Xers, and millennials out there grew up eating Chef Boyardee products? For me, it was my first introduction to anything resembling Italian food. Before I continue my gastronomic trip down memory lane, let me give you a very brief background on Chef Boyardee himself, because I found this very interesting. First of all, the chef was not a mere invention of ad executives like other food mascots. He was a real person by the name of Ettore, or Hector, Boyardi. His last name was actually spelled a little different from the phonetic version that's printed on all of his products. Hector Boyardi and his family immigrated to the U.S. from Italy when he was 16 years old. He then started working at the Plaza Hotel in New York, where his brother was a waiter. Thanks to his exquisite cooking skills, Hector Boyardi quickly became a sought-after chef. In fact, he actually catered President Woodrow Wilson's wedding in 1915. Later, when he opened his own restaurant in Cleveland, Ohio, customers started asking him for his tomato sauce recipe or even samples to take home with them. And so he began filling milk bottles with this tomato sauce. By 1928, he decided to go into production full-time, and thus, the Chef Boyardee brand brought Italian food into American mainstream. He decided to change the spelling of his last name as it appeared on his product so that the average American could pronounce it. During World War II, the U.S. military commissioned Chef Boyardee to produce army rations, which meant that the company had to operate 24 hours a day, requiring a workforce of around 5,000 people. Once the war ended, Hector Boyardee had to decide whether to sell off the company or lay off all those thousands of people he had employed for the war effort. In the end, he sold the company, but remained as its spokesman for several decades afterwards. To us baby boomers, Chef Boyardee was a familiar face at lunchtime. The beef ravioli was something we often had at our house. I haven't eaten this in many, many decades, but I remember the taste and the texture of the soft beef filling encased in that delicate pasta pillow, swimming in a zesty tomato sauce. Of course, I've had real Italian food and ravioli hundreds upon hundreds of times since, which were undoubtedly much more superior in quality. But good old Chef Boyardee will always hold a special sentimental place in my taste buds. We also had the Chef Boyardee beefaroni now and then. This was elbow macaroni with a ground beef based tomato sauce. Yeah, I remember liking it, but I always preferred that ravioli. Oh, and we also had the canned spaghetti and meatballs, which to an adult, okay, probably sounds pretty unappetizing. I mean, canned spaghetti and meatballs. But again, to our young taste buds, it was pretty good. Another popular canned pasta we had back then was SpaghettiOs, which was not part of the Chef Boyardee family, but it's still worth a mention due to its huge popularity. 
SpaghettiOs was actually a Campbell soup product sold under the Franco-American brand. As the name implies, these are pasta hoops in a tomato-based sauce. This was once a standard fare in school lunchrooms and daycare centers all over. All these products are still with us today, and in fact, if you look at the canned pasta section of your local grocery store, you'll no doubt discover that the Chef Boyardee line has expanded with lots of different pasta shapes and flavors to choose from. Although I personally do not buy or eat canned pasta anymore, if I were still a working mom who needs a quick hot meal for my child, I wouldn't hesitate to grab a can of Chef Boyardee ravioli. Do you like to read, or more specifically, do you like to lose yourself in a historical fiction drama? If so, check out the two novels written by me, Linda M. White, which are currently available on Amazon. Yellow Gal, Queen of the Montclair, and The Belle of Camden County are both set during the late 1800s and early 1900s in St. Augustine, Florida, and deal with the subject of racial identity. You can download excerpts from these two books from this podcast's account. Once again, it's time for me to sign off. And as always, I want to thank each and every one of you wonderful people for listening. Blessings to you all and stay safe out there. Adios. Thank you.